Hello and welcome to this demo of Azure Purview. In today's demo, uh, we're going to look at the new capability in Azure Purview for a data owner to set up policies on the underlying uh, Azure storage resources for the data consumers to access that uh, data using various applications like uh, Azure Storage Explorer or a compute engine like Synapse. So here is my Azure Purview for a Contoso Corp's data estate. I have uh, scanned and registered various data sources from this uh, Contoso's data estate. Uh, for example, I have a finance collection which contains a SQL database and a couple of ADLS Gen2 accounts, or I have a digital marketing collection which has another ADLS Gen2 account. I have my data map populated and it has various assets, like for example, a parquet file, which has a uh, inventory glossary term annotated on that. So here is the new policy management capability that uh, we are talking about. A policy is essentially a collection of policy statements. So I'm creating a new policy here, let's call it finance like policy description. Now I add policy statements to it. So each policy statement, as you can see, is a self-contained instruction or a rule on how a certain data should be allowed uh, to a given uh, subject. So I'm setting an allowed read operation on a data source. And in this case, uh, I'm selecting an ADLS Gen2 type. This is one of the ADLS Gen2 account that is registered in my purview. So I'm going to browse the data map and uh, let's say pick up a directory called customer in my ADLS Gen2 account. And I want this data set to be readable by a group of people in let's say finance analyst group in my Azure Active Directory. So this is a policy that I've created with one statement. I of course can add uh, more number of statement with which uh, I can give different uh, actions. For example, allow uh, modification of the data on a different folder on that same ADLS account. So for example, this time I'll choose inventory as that data source and then allow this access to, let's say, my own principal. Uh, let's search for Alice. So as you can see, you can author that policy and give the access to an individual principal or a group or any combination of that. So I'll go ahead and save this policy. So at this point, this policy is a draft policy that's sitting only in purview. So let's give this up. The next step is to publish this policy to one of the underlying data sources. So if I look at it, I have a few uh, SQL and storage accounts. So I would pick up, uh, let's say, finance like two as the next data source where I want to publish this policy. Once the policy is published, from that point forward, the underlying data store will start enforcing that policy. Uh, note that this is a asynchronous operation. So once after you click on publish, Purview will use the underlying infrastructure to propagate those policies to each of the relevant data source, and then uh, they will start enforcing. So just for the sake of this demo, I have recreated a couple of policies and I'm going to show how they are in effect. So let's look at the uh, finance late policy, which says uh, allow read on the finance container to a group called finance. And then uh, let's look at the finance analyst policy, which allows a read on a, a folder called data under that same finance container to the finance analyst group. Now let's see how this policy is enforced. So let's go to my storage explorer. So uh, here I'm logged in as uh, user Alice. 
who is part of the finance group. And as we saw before, uh, there's a policy that says allowed read on the entire container of the finance data lake storage account for that group uh, finance. So with that policy, Alice should be able to browse the full container and access uh, different folders and files under that. So this is that storage account and uh, I'm opening this uh, container in my storage uh, explorer. And as I mentioned, I can go browse this data. I can go to the individual folders or files, uh, optionally download that file on local machine or modify it, etc. Uh, then let's look at the second example where we have the finance analyst policy. And this allows a read on the folder called data to the finance analyst group. So here I have my uh, Synapse workspace and I'm logged in as user Charlie, who is a member of the finance analyst group. So I'll go to my, uh, I'll go and browse the data. Uh, as you probably are aware that we have a deep integration with uh, Synapse and Purview. So the Purview's data map is searchable directly from the Synapse experience. So I'll go and search for the inventory term. And now it shows me that I have a parquet file in my uh, data lake, which has this term inventory. And this parquet file is part of that data folder on which Charlie should have the read permission. So now I'll go ahead and uh, create a simple SQL script, which will uh, browse or read data from this parquet file. And as user Charlie, you know, I execute this script and I expect that it will uh, be able to read the data. And as you can see, uh, with Synapse uh, SQL, I'm able to extract the data from this file because I have this policy created in purview. So that's essentially uh, the part of this demo. Uh, in summary, uh, we have an ability for a data owner to give uh, read or modify permissions on uh, different type of data assets in Azure data, Azure storage which can be a blob store or ADLS Gen 2. You can set these policies at a container level or at the individual folder level. And once you define these policies centrally in purview, you can publish it to your individual uh, data sources or even a, uh, a resource group or a subscription in the near future. So these uh, data sources will then start enforcing that policies and any compute layer or an application that uh, interact with those uh, storage accounts will be enforced these policies and your uh, users will be able to run your compute workloads like uh, Synapse to extract data from the storage layer uh, via the purview policies. So thank you.